delighted to welcome um, Chris Clark to come and talk to us from GB Group. Uh, GB Group is something that we've been invested in, in the VCT uh, from 2011, building up um, our holdings over the next few years after that. Chris joined in 2017 from experience, so um, I'm hoping that he can just give us a bit of an introduction to GB Group itself and, and also a bit about his background and what attracted him to the company and to join it. Well, thanks, Anna, and uh, I hope you're all well and, and healthy. So GBG's purpose is very simple. Uh, we, uh, as a business, try and create trust in an online world. And so we're very much focused on helping B2C, business to consumer customers, quickly, simply, safely, and securely um, uh, transact with their consumer customers. So that's what we're all about. That's our purpose and that's our focus. Um, yes, as you said, I, I joined um, GBG actually just over three years ago, April the 1st, 2017. And I joined from Experian and, and Experian and GBG have a compete collaborate relationship in, in some sectors and some geographies. We compete with one another in, in others. We, we collaborate and work together in a somewhat complicated uh, ecosystem. So I'd actually known GBG uh, prior to joining for, for a number of years, and, and I described my uh, understanding of GBG sitting in Experian as distant admiration. And, and what I mean by that, it's a company that uh, I, was, I admired from a distance because they were approaching um, the broad identity uh, and fraud market in a very different way to, to many others. And, and the approach that I admired was very focused on, in an online digital world, um, the internet doesn't see physical borders. And therefore, if you want to transact online, actually you can be doing that across borders, whether that's ordering goods and services or, 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 or financial service, moving money across borders. And GBG was clear, was really focusing on, on that trend and, that, and, and, and therefore, I was very impressed by how they were going about seizing the opportunities. And, and then when, when I started talking to GBG, I was really also very impressed, not only by the strategy and the execution, but actually also by the culture. And, and GBG has a very simple motto, which is to have the best and most engaged team members. And therefore, we generally put our, 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 our team members around the world front and center of every decision we make. And as someone who's always been, I would argue, a very authentic leader who cares a lot about uh, who I work with and culture, uh, that really appealed to me. So, so that's kind of what GBG is all about and, and what I admired about GBG before I joined and, and why I joined. So what are the areas of, of, of the business that, that GB group, group gets involved in? It's, you know, there's ID verification, there's location, um, determination and then there's fraud prevention so i mean are these are these parts um that you've built up over time do you have to acquire different data sets and different capabilities how does it all work yeah so quite simply we are focused on three core capabilities or three core solutions location identity verification and fraud prevention and actually what's happening in an online world is those three core core workflows are coming together. And, and what I mean by that, perhaps using examples is, is a better way of explaining what I mean. So uh, for example, our location services, really we work with retailers powering e-commerce. So we work with people like eBay, Nike, um, some, of, yeah, some of the world's largest e-commerce players. And when you, uh, where you, when you and I would go online to order a good or service, we help um, that uh, retailer understand exactly where someone is for two primary reasons. One is to help um, customer acquisition by making it a very simple process uh, to reduce dwell time. And the other is to actually reduce the cost of what's called in the retail industry failed deliveries. So where you, you, you distribute a good or service and there's a wrong, for example, postcode in the UK and therefore it has to be returned. So that's kind of the core location service Identity verification is really about proving who you are. And that's, you know, that in financial services, that what might be for KYC, know your customer purposes. Um, for um, background checking, that's what's called know your people, where you have to prove 
Um, if, you, if you want to become a football association coach, you have to prove that you have got no prior convictions. It might be in, in online sports betting, proving that you're over the age of 18 and therefore allowed to. So that's about really understanding who someone is to meet compliance requirements in your chosen sector. And then fraud prevention is, is all about, um, unfortunately, there are lots of people in this world who have bad intentions and, and actually try and, um, for example, set up a current account in someone else's name and then steal money, frankly. And, and fraud prevention is all about um, st trying to stop those bad actors. And historically, those three things have been looked at as fairly separate workflows. But clearly, in a, in a digital age, um, actually, if you think about it, when you first interact as a consumer with a, with a business, whether that's an e-tailer or a bank um, or even a utility company, if you can get all the right credentials up front and they're accurate, accurate and verified, actually, that, that helps serve multiple purposes. So, so we have those three distinct solutions, which we are in time joining together to meet that single purpose that I described up front, which is helping create trust online, connecting. And how, and how does the business model work? I mean, for example, I'm thinking about, um, is it through the number of searches that, uh, that a customer might, might pay you or do they pay you in a more of a repeatable fashion? We have, a, we have a mix of, uh, we have both license for some of our software services and usage based for, mm -hmm. on a per click basis. Um, and actually broadly at a group level, we're 50-50 license and usage based. Okay. Um, and what would set you apart as GB Group against competition? Is it the speed? Is it the accuracy? Is it the coverage you have? What kind of... What kind yeah, of I mean, we, we believe we've got three core differentiators. Firstly, is our global coverage of, of citizens um, through data and access to data in, in hundred, uh, you know, hundreds of countries. And we can verify to an AML, anti-money laundering perspective, um, over four and a half billion of the world's population. So, so that sort of core differentiator one is the depth and breadth of global data coverage. Um, core differentiator two is our technology. Um, and by that, really, firstly, making it really simple for companies to, to plug and play um, our, te our technology into their, because it's often in, the, in a workflow. Uh, and, and, and secondly, from a technology perspective, the ability to, to triangulate data. So, you know, in this day and age, you can't rely on one data source for, for a variety of reasons, most, you know, most notably data breaches and, and people's credentials being available on the dark web. So being able to triangulate multiple data sources is another differentiator. And last but not least is, is actually our 1,050 people in over 14 countries around the world. And as I've already mentioned, you now we generally believe we have the best and most engaged workforce, and we believe that is a dif differentiator. So those are the three. It's our data, our technology, and our people. And um, what are you seeing um, in this um, these strange COVID times? First of all, and I suppose you mentioned William Hill earlier. Now, there's not been a lot of betting going along for a sport. So, you know, you might be seeing a dip there. But then again, on the e-commerce side, you might be seeing some, some, some big rises in, 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 in business. So can you just talk us through about what, what the underlying moving parts are? Yeah, so at a, at a high level, like many businesses, we're, we're focused in the, in the current global pandemic on firstly our people, their, their health and safety. Secondly, our customers. Um, thirdly, our communities. And, and lastly, our, or fourthly, our, our financial health liquidity. If you think about what's the overall impact of the global pandemic on GBG, well, firstly, um, as a global business, you know, we've actually been dealing with it since early January with operations in the mainland China. I'm actually pleased to report that our, our Chinese team are back in offices in Shanghai and Beijing, and there's some um, return to normality. Um, um, but as you quite rightly said, if you look at it from a, a customer perspective, it, the absolute impact depends on the sector that we serve, the solution we serve, and the geography. But broadly, um, you know, if you think, look at our sector exposure, we're about 45% financial services, and within that, retail banks, fintechs, insurance. We're about 10% gaming companies. We're about 10% retail. Um, we're about 6% travel and leisure, and we're about 5% public sector. So we are seeing very different trends. And I guess the summary would be we are seeing exponential growth for some of our sectors, for some of our services. 
we're equally seeing significant impacts um, in terms of downward volumes on, on other sectors. Um, and actually kind of how that all nets out is, is frankly, to some degree, anyone's guess, albeit clearly as time goes by, you get a much better view of the trends that we're seeing. Have you seen, um, what do you anticipate the impact on margins is going to be? Do you, are you able to take any kind of mitigating costs out? We've, we've, we've been prudent over the last couple of months. Um, we, we've delayed all but essential recruitment. And as a fast growing business, recruitment is something we do a lot of. Mm. So we are doing um, some recruitment, but very limited compared to our original plans. Um, we've uh, suspended our dividend to, to maximize our liquidity position. Um, we have delayed some investments. Um, so so uh, we're not slashing and burning because we actually believe that net-net that over time, the trends are going to be positive for GBG. So, and, and we do believe that there'll be opportunities as the world gets used to the normal normal. Um, but we've been prudent in some of the some of the decisions we've made. So exactly how that plays out in margin actually depends more on on the revenue. Um, yeah. Is how we're thinking about it. Okay. And what about in terms of um, the um, how how promptly your customers are paying you? Are you seeing some pressure to extend your payment terms? We are. Um, I think every business is, frankly. Um, mm. uh, we we you know, we are seeing some customers ask for for deferred payment terms. Um, and does we, that have much to do with size or is it across the board? No, across yeah. the board. Yeah. You know, we serve, you know, you know, frankly, we serve airlines, uh, very big retailers. So, and, and whether they're large or small, we're seeing, albeit we saw a big, uh, in, in Europe, um, you know, late March, early first couple of weeks of April, we saw quite a few customers asking for extended payment terms. We've seen that actually um, slow down quite considerably. And, and frankly, we've not had a one-size-fits-all approach. We've been supportive. I've already said you know, prior to being responding to our customers' requirements, we've been supportive where it's we believe it's the right thing to do in the long term. But but equally, we've not sort of rolled over either, as it were. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, what are your ambitions for the company in terms of uh, your strategy for organic growth and for inorganic growth? Well, I mean, sitting where we are today in in a in a in the global pandemic, I mean, firstly, our absolute priority is to, to make sure that, that, that we, we, we manage the, the pandemic in a responsible way. Um, that said, as I've already kind of touched on, we, we do believe that, that whatever the new normal looks like and whatever time zone, uh, time horizon that, that occurs, um, that the overall trends are broadly positive for a company like us if you actually think about what i've said we're about creating trust in the online world well acceleration acceleration of digitalization or doing things remotely um, is a is a major driver of growth for gbg actually as is um stopping bad actors and, and i think there's been a lot in the press around the world about the increase of, of, of phishing and fraud attempts well you know, that, so those sort of broad trends actually help our business. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, we, we feel today our strategy is absolutely relevant. And if anything, is, it's, it's more relevant in the future. Um, so we're actually quite excited about the longer term opportunities that this presents. So, so you know, when I talk about making prudent decisions on managing margins, we're still investing. We absolutely believe that, that, that in the long term, this is going to create opportunity. So we're, we are slightly reprioritizing some of our focus. And, and the example I'll give you, actually, I've already mentioned we do a lot of work for, for, for e-commerce players. Um, very, as you would, I think, imagine, some of those e-commerce players are seeing volumes explode. Um, others are seeing significant reduction. So actually, we've, we've accelerated some of our development work on, on geolocation to allow pinpoint delivery to the end of someone's driveway as opposed to actually a front door. Mm -hmm. so we've actually brought that into life and we're working in the UK, for example, with some of the largest supermarkets on that deployment. So we've shifted some of our development cycles to, to meet the, 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 the very pressing requirements. Um, but overall, um, our, our organic growth plans don't fundamentally change. I think the other point though is, as you quite rightly said, Anna, uh, Acquisitions have been an important part of our growth strategy. We've made 12 in the last eight years. Um, we've, all, we've always been active in building pipeline. And, and actually, we do believe that this crisis will present greater opportunity at the right time um, for, for us to, to acquire and accelerate our, our strategies. 
And do you think, do you think that, there, that valuations might become more palatable um, in, in, this, in this new world? I mean, I don't know who, who, who whether, the, whether some of your competitors might be having a, a slightly tougher time than you or... Yeah, I mean, I think yeah, we do believe that. Whether it comes to fruition, will only time will tell. I think there's an inevitable um, cycle that happens, which is public valuations come down a bit, and and you know, privately held valuations take longer longer to come down. So it's, I don't think we've seen a change in private value expectations as of today, but we do believe that that will change in the months ahead. And absolutely, we think that uh, some very good companies will find funding tricky, which will present yeah. opportunity for us. And we're already seeing some cases of that. Um, that said, we are operating in a, in a hot space. And, and I think most people um, buy the thesis that I've talked about, which is actually some of these trends are net positive. So there is still money going into to our space. But yes, we do believe that, that through the crisis, that there'll be uh, interesting opportunities will present themselves. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for your time. That was really uh, a very interesting run through and um, I hope to speak to you soon. Thank you and good catch up with you too. Okay, thanks.